Hello and welcome to the Fortress of Solitude. Today is July the 16th, a notorious date in world history and a significant date in the Chronicles of the Fortress of Solitude as well, for reasons that I will explain later. I mean, going back a few centuries to 1419, we've got the uh, first defenestration of Prague, an incident in which um, angry Hussites uh, stormed the, the Prague city hall and threw seven members of the city council into the street below. The first defenestration of Prague is not notable so much for its importance as one of the triggers for the Hussite Wars, which saw the first widespread use of guns in the battlefield, but for the fact that we have to distinguish the event from several others by calling it the first defenestration of Prague. The people of Prague seem to have a historical attraction to the use of windows as a means of political expression. Moving on 526 years, we've got the New Mexico uh, atom bomb tra test, uh, the Trinity test that marked the entry of humanity into the atomic age. This was the first and only test of atomic weapons before the atomic bomb was dropped on Japan just three weeks later, uh, killing 80,000 people in one go, mostly, mostly civilians. While the necessity of the bombings can be argued, it is certain that the action entailed a global entry into an age where the theories of science were destined to be incomprehensible to the common man, able to be judged only in terms of the moral dimension of their practical applications. A few weeks before the Trinity Test, uh, Allied forces mopping up in Germany had uncovered the Middle Works, a brutal warren of underground uh, factories uh, which employed 20,000 slave laborers and technicians who worked to create the V-2 rocket, the world's first ballistic missile uh, and the very first launch vehicle capable of reaching low orbit. This was to be Hitler's uh, last strike sort of thing against the last strike weapon against the Allies. Uh, uh, but it failed, of course, to turn the course of the war. The technical operations of the Middle Works and the design of the V-2 rocket were the responsibility of a brilliant young man named Werner von Braun. More than 4,500 V-2 rockets were built by slave labor in the Middle Works under wretched conditions that caused thousands of deaths. And, of course, the actual rockets themselves blew up large sections of England and Western Europe. Once the rockets are up, who cares where they come down? That's not my department, says Werner von Braun. As the Allies secured their holes on conquered Germany, the British and Americans uh, scrambled to be the first to get their hands on the technical data and engineers behind the V-2. Uh, the Americans got there first and von Braun was captured and prepared to work on the fledgling U.S. Uh, rocket program. Throughout the 1950s, von Braun worked closely with another extraordinary and unusual genius by the name of Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons was a, uh, officially a chemist. He was also a rather well-known artist and occultist. Uh, and, uh, more colorfully, a sometimes Satan worshipper who was an acquaintance and indeed a confidant of um, Aleister Crowley and L. Ron Hubbard. Crowley is perhaps the world's most famous occultist, and during his lifetime he was known as the wickedest man in the world, although considering he was alive at the same time as Hitler and Stalin, we can probably dismiss that as hyperbole. L. Ron Hubbard was, of course, the founder of Scientology, which I'm not going to say anything about Scientology, because Scientology is a perfectly respectable religion that all sorts of sane people like Tom Cruise follow. Uh, Parsons pledged allegiance to the coming Antichrist and uh, promised to start bringing about the apocalypse. And coincidentally, he started working with the uh, Werner von Braun on the American uh, space program, which uh, saw the production of the first uh, ballistic missiles and ICBM rockets. On this date, 37 years ago, the Apollo 11 rocket carried Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and that first third guy that everyone forgets to the moon. For the first time, humans set foot on another celestial body, the first rung of a ladder that might well lead to the stars. Some actually have called this the most important achievement in the history of our race. And yet it was made possible by two sometimes immoral and perhaps even misguided geniuses, making it once again clear that for the common man, untangling the motivation and morality of our most brilliant minds from the potential good of their actions can be next to impossible. And finally, in the week of July 16th, 2006, I had the ductwork around the Fortress of Solitude cleaned. And in so doing, I uncovered a pair of extraordinary historical documents, the importance of which is made all the more singular by the fact that they were placed in the Fortress of Environment environs before my tenancy here. Some of you may be wondering why I, after offering this litany of historical significant events, failed to mention the news where the events of this past week. The Fortress of Solitude is protected from contemporary reality by a powerful triviality filter which is the product of an anti-reality field of my own uh, design. 
Uh, just look at the effect that this device has on uh, a recent uh, newspaper headline. We'll just uh, switch it on here and see what happens. And thus am I protected from unpleasant externalities. I just realized actually that we've not actually taken the time to review or look at those extraordinary documents I mentioned. So we'll have to wait again until next week. Good night from the Fortress of Solitude. And have fun. Stay safe outside your triviality fields. Good night, folks. About a thousand different theories the scientists can show, but never yet have proved a reason why. With all we've thought and all we're taught, why all we seem to know is we're born, live a while, then we die.